Welcome to Talking Live. I'm Dr. Robbie Ludwig right here in Starshop Studio in Times Square. And we are so happy to have Carissa Krantz, who is a ballerina turned attorney, turned founder and CEO of BevVeg, which is an interesting certification program. Right. And she is going to tell us all about it and her unique background. And there's an app that everybody could download. So you're in for a real treat today. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, Robbie. This has been set in motion for a long time because we yes. have mutual friends. Yes, I've actually supposed to have met you like years ago. I know. These mutual friends. I know. You have a very interesting background. And okay. we were at a party recently where you said that you were vegan right. from in the womb. So we will get to that story. That's right. What is the difference between being a vegan and vegetarian? Because there is a difference. There is a difference, and it's actually a really good question because a lot of people don't really know, even though veganism is like a top trend, it's the number one search term on Google in all urban cities, it's increasing 1,500% a year. I know the statistics because I have a business on it. But the truth is, people really don't know the difference, the average person. Like I was on an airplane the other day traveling and I asked for a vegan meal and the person next to me asked that exact same question. What's the difference between vegan and vegetarian? And the difference is, is vegetarian means they're not gonna eat any animal that died. However, they will eat milk and dairy products mm -hmm. or eggs maybe, they'll be less strict. A vegan, um, won't eat any animals and they won't eat any dairy or cheese or yogurt or milk. But it's also an interesting thing that you brought up by asking for like what's the difference between mm -hmm. vegetarian and vegan because a lot of people will say, well, what does vegan mean? And vegan is like the wild west right now. Mm. There is no legal standard. There is no definition that defines what vegan is. There is no entity that is regulating vegan claims out there to keep them accountable. So that's where my business came into play, where I founded BevEdge International, which is a vegan certification program, and my law firm, um, which has been around for seven years, manages the vegan certification process. So what we did as a law firm is we set a standard which defined what vegan is, and then companies will apply to us and we will hold them to that standard before we license use of our logo, which is an interesting concept. Because and we have, we have actually the logo back here. Yeah. That is your vegan logo. And you also worked with Christy Brinkley. I do want to get to kind of yeah. your interesting history though, but you worked with Christy Brinkley and there's a wine that you certified as being vegan. Correct. So we have two trademark symbols, the BevEdge symbols. One of them is that circle V, mm -hmm. and the other one is actually what's on Christy Brinkley's wine bottle. It's a wine glass V symbol, um, but it has the same circle V, V with the vegan certification word at the top. It's just a variation mm -hmm. of the symbol. And um, Christy Brinkley, who's a vegetarian herself, mm. um, applied her wines that are straight out of Italy for the certification seal and they pass the process so that's she amazing has our logo on her bottles now for people out there who are wine aficionados there's organic wine right is that that's vegan is that a whole other issue yeah. a whole other process that's a great question um so just like people don't always know the difference between vegetarian and vegan people don't always know the difference between organic and vegan, they think it's uh -huh. the same thing. Um, organic goes to soil practices mm -hmm. and whether or not there's um, chemicals in the soil or how things are grown, mm -hmm. um, whereas vegan goes to the ingredients and the process of making something and whether or not there's any animal products in the final product. So something that is organic may not be vegan and something that is vegan may not be organic. Like even the way soil is, um, fertilized. It may be organic, but they may use manure, which a vegan might say, well, that's not oh, vegan. That's so, interesting. so it really depends on where you draw the line, but they're totally different concepts and things. What I thought was so interesting is that there are a lot of people that become vegan when they're older or vegetarian. You were telling me that this was something that you have practiced in the womb because your mother 
who was a professional ballerina, was vegan way back in the day before it was even trendy. I think we have a picture of your gorgeous mom. My God. Yeah. I mean, the genes in your family. That's her. That's her. And you also were a ballerina as well, background wise, right? That was kind yeah. of a direction you were moving in as well. So how did your mother become a vegan and, and you know, did you ever rebel against that idea? No, never. I think I chose her so I would be born <laughs> into this lifestyle. Um, my mom was raised vegetarian actually oh. in Atlanta, Georgia, which was very unusual back then to be mm. raised as a, as a vegetarian Jew in the South. Yes. Um, it started out with my great grandfather. Wow. On her side. Yeah. Huh. He was sick with cancer and he made himself vegan and went on this whole diet of rice and beans and cut out meat and dairy. Huh. And he, the story is he cured himself. Huh. I wasn't alive then, but that's the story. And really, I'm a fourth generation veg in the family. I'm vegan, I'm not vegetarian, but all my cousins mm. on my mom's side, all of her siblings, they all lead this plant-based lifestyle. And do you feel healthier? I mean, obviously your body's in great shape. You said that it really helped you in terms of your athletic lifestyle being a ballerina for many, many years. Yeah. Um, so I don't have contrast because I never ate meat. Mm -hmm. um, but I can say that I've never broken a bone in my body and that I dance to the highest level of professional athleticism possible mm. by dancing professionally and getting into you know, American Ballet Theater, New York City Ballet, or Juilliard. And I don't think that there's been any trade on my mental performance or ability either because I've you know, I've gone to law school and passed three bar exams and run a business. So, so. that's a, that's <laughs> so interesting too that you ended up being a lawyer and that you passed not only one bar exam, which is very hard. Yeah, it's not. Um, fun. But three. I mean, yeah. what got you to try out for try out for like it's I'm some play? <laughs> but, but in Washington D.C., Florida, and New York State, you passed the bar. Yeah. What made you decide to go for three bar exams? Well, I don't know if I was totally committed on where I wanted to live and where my life was. Uh -huh. And when you take one, I think you're on a roll and you know you never want to do that again. So you just want to get them over with. That's true. They because say do it right away. I, I wish I took California now because there are cases and, you know, even with BevEg, like California is like a huge wine market. Mm. Not that you need to be California bar certified, but it, it would just help to just the more jurisdictions, the better kind of like when you have a product, the more certification stamps, the better. It's just, you know, I wish I did it. What got you interested in the law? Was the end game BevEg or that was something that grew out of being a lawyer? Yeah, that's something that transpired. Um, so I was born and raised vegan, right? So this is something very authentic to me. And um, it was something that I really chose to do. Like mm. you asked, did I ever rebel? I've never rebelled. Um, my parents divorced when I was five. My dad is not vegan at all. He ate meat. And I had to spend half the week with him. Mm. So at five, my mom said, you're going to go to your dad's. He's going to try to feed you meat. You do what you want, but this is what it is. So I went to him, and he tried to put chicken on my plate. He tried to put fish on my plate. He tried to put steak on my plate. And I waged World War III oh. on my plate and would not have anything to do with it. So I really made a moral decision when I was a child. Um, even though I think I was raised this way for health reasons because of what happened with my great grandfather, it was more of a health trend in my family, but for me it was a moral decision. So um, to answer your question on whether or not Bevage was always in the making, um, consciously no. Okay. But I think maybe it might be my life purpose. Yes. And so what we really know about foods out there, and I have some patients who have food allergies, where they can literally die mm -hmm. if they take in something that does not work well with their body. And they will look on labels. And sometimes those labels are not accurate. That's true. And part of what you're trying to do is to help companies have transparency. So what is currently going on in the vegan world where you really felt you needed to step in mm -hmm. and make a difference? Okay. Um, well, there's two things. I actually got a phone call last week in my law firm, um, and hopefully we can take the case. Um, we don't normally take cases like this because we're into vegan certification, but it does go to 
the direct issue of transparency. So someone in New York City was ordering, and there's, there's, this was in the news, was ordering the vegan burgers from Burger King because they were advertising that they mm. were carrying it, and it was sent by like Grubhub or Seamless or one of those food um, services, and they were sending meat. That they weren't even carrying the burgers at the time. Oh my god! It was gosh. false advertising, and it's kind of a it's kind of a unique situation because normally when you take a legal case, you have to have damages, right? Someone has to be injured. So he didn't really get sick, but there mm. are there are damages. He's he has emotional distress, but there are no laws really defining that. Mm. Um, so. BevEdge as a law firm, we're not really here to like take on those cases, but I do have an injury law background, so I'm happy to consider taking this on if we can set a standard. But as a law firm, what BevEdge is doing is defining a standard for veganism, and lawyers by nature are regulators, so we are creating a certification process and basically making it a practice area in law, which means I pioneered my own path forward as a law firm and created an area of law that doesn't really exist but that needs to exist so. I think it's amazing and there's an app that mm -hmm. people can download right. if they download your vegan app what will they find what will they see okay so our vegan beverage app which is in both app stores Google Play and Apple um, right now just catalogs alcoholic beverages so vegan wine vegan beer vegan liqueur and we have over 1 million entries in our database mm -hmm. and a key and it basically if you search it should show up whether it's no information which a lot of them are no information because the truth is we have no information on these things because the tobacco and trade bureau which regulates alcohol has zero disclosure requirements except for a government warning in the alcohol content so mm. a lot of things go into making wine like is in glass, which is fish bladder, or gelatin, which is cow's elbows and knees and horse hooves, and pig's feet. And that just sounds so gross. It's disgusting, and whether you're vegan Why or do not, they use that? They like, why even use that? They don't need to. It's just an age-old process. Oh. And the reality is, is even the owners of these wineries don't know what's being put in their wines. It's only, it's literally up to the winemaker, mm -hmm. and only the winemaker. So some of these wineries apply to us, and they think they're vegan, and they're not. But so anyway, we're trying to, this app is a work in progress, but it's, it's absolutely there and you can um, find out if it's vegan certified, if they claim to be vegan, if there's no information or if they're not vegan. Um, and we're trying to make it smart so it can interact with Google, so it can contact those that we have no information on so they can be notified to either write in and let us know or so we can change it. We're, we've been already called the ultimate alcohol guide That's by great. the Kindly Magazine. But I think we have a long way to go because maybe we have information on 50,000 beverages and there's over a million that have been turned into the Tobacco and Trade Bureau for approval. So that means there's a lot more that we have zero information on. So, so if um, there's zero information, let's say, and a company wants to hire you mm -hmm. and they're like, we want to be vegan certified. BevVeg is the number one company and the only company currently globally, internationally that can do it. How much would a company hope to spend on something like this? So, okay, there are, just so you know, I do have, there are two other logos out there. Oh, okay. One is by, um, in, more in the U.S. and the other one is more in Europe, but we okay. are the one that is more globally trademarked. Okay. And I think what sets us apart is they, they are um, vegan advocacy groups and we're a law firm, so I think we really bring credibility to the mm -hmm. process to raise the standard. And we're not out there, you know, um, marching on the streets and creating campaigns that could turn people off. Mm -hmm. I think in veganism, sometimes what we have going against us is our own, our own kind, mm -hmm. because they don't act always just normal. <laughs> Um, no, but that's a really good distinction. You yeah. can be more in that neutral, factual space. And I just yeah. want to mention, too, that you have one of the world's most exclusive vegan wine club mm -hmm. as well. So that people can, you work with a certified sommelier? Yes, but right now that club is on hold. Oh, okay. We're focused on more of the certifications. Okay. But the club. Absolutely, I think is a great way for vegans and a way to go, but I'm more focused right now on the law firm side okay. of things and like that's having great. a vegan wine club, um, but that's something, we have so many vegan wines now in our database that we really 
need to do something with that, but I need to have someone else run that. I got gotcha. you. All right. Me. So listen, if you're a business out there that feels very motivated and very passionate about this cause, you can call Carissa and just, you know, see how you can help out or infuse money into, right? The yeah, business. Or if you have a background in <laughs> alcohol and distributing and you want to run it, there you go. She's, she's interviewing right now. We have something called the Quick Five, but I did want to mention to you mm -hmm. as well, um, or just mention to our audience, that you're writing a book. Right. And it's just so interesting because you talk about the laws that matter, right? Is that the title of the That's book? That's the title. That's the title of the book. And so we are hoping that within the next year or so, we will see that book out in the market. And I love, I love the idea because you're a lawyer and you care about the karmic laws, and I think that just right. all fits beautifully together. So yeah. I just think it's just a genius Thank position you. for you to take. Yeah. And I look forward to reading the book and having you back on oh, as, you. Soon, as soon as uh, it comes out. We do something called the Quick Five, okay. so people can get to know you better. If you could ask advice from any historical figure, who would it be, and what would you ask them? And I got no warning on these questions. <laughs> no warning, that's true. We like to... We like to get hmm. spontaneous answers. Any historical? Hmm. Is there any like brilliant vegan historical figure? Oh gosh, you know I don't know. Isn't that interesting? I don't know that we know who historically is vegan. We can come back to that. I think I need to think on that. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll come back. Mm -hmm. If you could write one new law mm -hmm. that everyone had to obey, what law would you create? Well, I would write the law for the standard of veganism, and I would want companies and products that apply to be held accountable to the standard of consumer transparency and honesty in labeling laws. Yeah. And making vegan a real standard and a real practice area of Which, law. Which, quite frankly, I'm surprised it isn't already. So I'm it's, so glad that you are working to move us in that direction. It, yeah, it, it's just, it's not, an, it's not a vegan issue. It's yeah. an honesty issue. Yeah. And it's a, like, we live in an information age where everybody wants transparency. Right. Whether it's their food or their relationship or politics, mm -hmm. you want to know what you're dealing with. You want to know what you are exposing yourself to and what you're eating and what your mm -hmm. body is being exposed to. I agree. Yeah. When you have 30 minutes of free time, which I know is very, very rare, how do you pass the time? Getting overwhelmed with everything that I need to do. Um, <laughs> now that doesn't sound fun. <laughs> no. Um, you know, I'm into meditation. If I have more than 30 minutes, I'd like to go to ballet class. Uh huh. Um, Sometimes I like to just be and be quiet because yeah. I have so much going on and life that goes so fast around me that sometimes I just need to harness my energy and be like alone. Mm -hmm. That's good. Be de-stimulated <laughs> yeah. from overstimulation, yeah. which um, a busy person like you, yeah. I could see who's in three different states and many different states too, working on all your, all your goals, I could see where you would just feel overwhelmed. What's the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week? That Burger King story I yeah. told you about, I was shocked because I'm actually too busy to turn on the TV and watch TV, and I'm too busy to do, to read much besides like my cases and my current case load and managing like the work that's being turned into me at my law firm to review it. But when this case came in, and it, there were actually news stories about this vegan burger from yeah. Burger King that wasn't vegan at all, that was delivered to this person and claimed to be vegan to eat. More on more than one occasion, like he actually documented mm. it. Um, that was shocking. Yeah, that is a and shocking story. And it shows story. exactly why it's a sign of the times and necessary, you know, to have honest labeling laws and not to have misrepresentation right. and advertising. And to care about the customer and to care about what you're and, saying, you're doing. And, and it's really hard because you, you know you brought up earlier how like some people have real serious food allergies. Yeah. So with vegan, it's very rare unless you got bit by that tick that makes you allergic to eating meat. It's, right. it's very rare to be allergic to eating meat. But for a lot of people, it's a moral thing mm -hmm. and or a religious thing even. Right. And you can have some severe emotional distress. Right. I mean, I know I would, yeah. but the law doesn't really recognize well, that. Well, because it also rocks your identity. Completely. You know, who are you as a person? What do you stand for? And all of a sudden, if you're eating something that you don't know or it's not part of your... It would be the same as serving kosher food and it not being kosher. Right. It would be very similar yes. to that. What event in your life would make 
for a good movie. I didn't get into the Miss Jones story. Um, oh, yes. But I have to say, and I can try to sum up that story fast, but if there were some cameras that documented um, that whole, um, I don't even know what you want to call it, um, that would have that would be a movie. Miss Jones was your ballet teacher. Yeah. So and she we will just we will have an article so you can read that. But basically it was your ballet teacher mm -hmm. who you took care of when she had Alzheimer's and your wrist right. band now was something that you created for her as right. well. So we can put that up and we will have your website so people can learn how you really stopped your life in many ways mm -hmm. to, to be her caretaker mm -hmm. because she didn't have any family and you loved her. Right. And um, how she continued to be your teacher even when she was failing health-wise. Right. So we will put up that article so people yeah. can read it. You're a fascinating, multi-dimensional mm -hmm. woman. And we're so thrilled to have you here. And I'm so, thanks, I'm so glad we finally made this I work. Know. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.